We have seen last lecture the following theorem. So uh, consider, so let, uh, now the initial conditions, now I don't remember the, the, the notation of the initial conditions. Uh, U0 bar and U1 bar. OK, thanks. So assume that this is C2 and U1 bar is C1. And consider, uh, consider the following problem. UTT minus C square UXX equal to 0 in uh, R times R, say. This is time. This is space, time space. Then U in C2, U in C2 of R times R, U at time 0 equal u0 bar, u at, ut at time 0 equal u1 bar. Then there exists a unique solution. This problem has a unique solution given by the D'Alembert formula. as follows, u of tx equal, uh, well, it is of the form capital F of plus capital G of x. If, if I'm not wrong, these were the notation, but more precisely, it is one half. Then we have u0 bar x plus ct plus u1 u0 bar x minus ct plus 1 over 2c x plus ct uh, u1 bar uh, u1 bar uh, of s yes c. this uh, was the D'Alembert formula. Huh? And this was the result. So the, the proof was that if you have an equation like this, then by the splitting property, then necessarily you can be written as the sum of two functions, capital F and capital G, depending on this variable and this variable. Where F is, for instance, uh, uh, u0 bar plus 1 over 2c, a primitive of u1 bar. Hmm? Any primitive. For instance, uh, you start from 0 to this. And g is, of course, the other. OK, so this, is, this was the result. So keep in mind that this result is one dimension. So uh, it is essential here that uh, we are in one space dimension, one. If you look for such a kind of formulas in any space dimension, then the situation is much more complicated. And you have to distinguish in between uh, even dimensions and odd dimensions. But so as far as we, we are concerned, we are interested for the moment just to dimension, space dimension one, OK? So, and we, 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 from this, we can, we can infer some qualitative properties of the solution. Qualitative property of U in particular, the continuous dependence, in particular, I would like to say something about the continuous dependence 
continuous dependence of u on the initial conditions, on u0, u1. With respect to with respect to the L infinity norm. Indeed, we have the following remark. So remark one. So assume that uh, um, assume that there exists epsilon. Say assume that uh, u zero bar in L infinity is less than epsilon, uh, and that u one bar also is less than epsilon. Uh, for some epsilon positive, so there exists epsilon positive such that. The, uh, the initial conditions, uh, the initial uh, position, and the initial velocity of the of the string uh, is uh, is uh, of the wire, say, of the wire, is um, is small. In in the, in the uniform norm, do you know what is this L infinity norm? The supreme, yes, of the absolute value. Okay, then what what we can say? So what about the solution? So now u of tx is less than, so look, look at this. This is our explicit solution. So we have one half epsilon plus epsilon here. So we have uh, two epsilon and therefore epsilon plus. Then we have uh, one over two c. Then here again we can put epsilon. Hmm? times the length of the interval, which is again um, 2 CT. So uh, 2 CT epsilon, epsilon. So we can write this as epsilon times 1 plus T absolute value if we if we are interested in we are going back and forth backward and forward here of course the positive times are the the, the the times of physical interest huh? but if you if we look at the solution this makes sense also for negative times so for this argument there is no reason to exclude negative times so I put an absolute value here. And so you see, uh, this says that uh, if, so if u0 bar, u1 bar are epsilon close to the origin, uh, in the L infinity norm, Then, huh? then on any on a strip on a strip of the form uh, um, minus a a times r. So on, on a horizontal strip. So provided that time is uh, is bounded between two constants, huh? then on a, on a strip, uh, also the L infinity norm of the solution is, say, epsilon close to 0 in L infinity. Huh? So this is this is uh, continuity with respect to L infinity uh, of initial conditions with respect to L infinity. Uh, of course, here there is time. So if I want an uniform bound, I need time bounded between two constants. 
So this is small, provided that time is, is, is bounded. Of course, this is not small for any time. Hmm? But on a strip, on a horizontal strip, any fixed horizontal strip, then I have a uniform bound on the solution. So this says that we have continuity of initial conditions with respect to the infinity norm because there is, a, there is, a, there is here a, a nice, an assumption that I'm taking, I'm close just to the origin. But, but this is a linear equation. So actually it is enough to say that, that this is close to zero. So to say that, uh, uh, to say continuity with respect to initial conditions since the equation is linear is equivalent to say continuity at zero with respect to the initial condition. Okay, so continuity at zero because of linearity. Hmm? Uh, or if one wants, so smallness in L infinity implies a smallness of the solution at least on horizontal strips. Now, if you want to avoid this, uh, this bound and you want a uniform bound on the whole time space, then you have to make an assumption. So the second remark is remark two. Assume that there exists epsilon positive such that u0 bar in L infinity is less than epsilon, u1 uh, bar in L infinity is less than epsilon, and the support of u1 bar, say, is compact, is compact. And so assume that the support of u1 bar is contained in a compact set. And then you see what happens here. <coughs> then Well, actually, these integrations is only in K. Uh, and so we find uh, then U is uniform, uniformly small, is small, sorry. Um, then u is less than epsilon 1 plus, how can I call, interval, so b, say, so assume that k is contained in minus bb. So this compact set, assume it is contained in, the in, in, in some interval minus bb. Then u is less than epsilon for any in R type sum. Okay. So uh, so we have this now. We have. Uh, avoided the, the restriction to an horizontal strip, but we have assumed that the initial velocity is, compact, is compactly supported. Okay, so now we, 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 I, I, I left you some exercises. So I keep just this formula. And, uh, um, and maybe another remark is useful, remark three, before discussing the exercise, 
is that uh, uh, we, we cannot apply, in the previous theorem, we cannot apply, apply um, the Cauchy-Kovaleski Cauchy Why we cannot apply the Cauchy-Kovaleski theorem? Because the Cauchy-Kovaleski theorem holds, of course, for non-characteristic surfaces, uh, but, but, but also because uh, it holds when u0 bar and u1 bar are analytic. Uh, in, this, in this case, u0 and u1 were c2 and c1, and not analytic in, in general. Therefore, we cannot say that this is the solution given by, by the Cauchy-Kovaleski, because we miss the regularity assumption. Because u0 bar is only c2 and not analytic, and not necessarily analytic, necessarily analytic. And u1 bar is only c1 and not necessarily analytic. Why this distinction c2, c1? Well, you see, uh, we look for a solution u which is c2 because we want to make two derivatives in time and in space. So if u0 is c2, this part in, in, in parentheses is clearly C2. If U1 is C1, U1 bar is C1, then its primitive is C2. Huh? Therefore, U is the sum of two C2 functions, and the solution is classical. This is the reason why we distinguish C2, C1. Hmm? So we need slightly less regularity on the initial speed to have a classical solution, OK? And, uh, and this formula is not given. The, the Cauchy-Kovaleski theorem gives us a local solution. First, first remark is local. And this is a global solution. Global means for any times, for all positive times, negative also. So global in time. So Cauchy-Kovaleski gives you a local solution. This expression is explicit and gives you a global solution. Moreover, it holds also when these are not analytic, but of this, in this regularity class. OK. So this is the third remark. And then now we can pass to solve the exercises. I, I will make some picture. So this is an extremely interesting uh, explicit formula. So we have a traveling wave. We have a first traveling wave moving toward the right along the characteristic this, x minus ct, say. And then we have a superposition with this traveling wave, with this other traveling wave G, superposition uh, moving, uh, sorry, this was moving to, to the right, is move, move, moving to the left. Uh, and so we have, say, this is the direct characteristic, this, let us call direct characteristic this and inverse characteristic this, just. And so we have the, the, the superposition of two fronts, of two, of two uh, profiles, which remains always the same, remain always the same, and move one toward the right with, the, with, 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 with velocity c, and one toward the left with velocity minus c. Hmm? Or, by the way, toward the right with the right with velocity c, and toward the left with velocity c. Same velocity. So, so the exercises. 
So it was exercise one. I think it was assume that u1 bar, the initial velocity, is identically zero. So that we have only to look at this part of the solution. Hmm? Just only at this part. And assume also that uh, This was the initial u0 bar. So this is the graph of u0 bar. And our notation where I think uh, u0 bar of x uh, equal to uh, x plus alpha. So this is minus alpha. This is alpha. This is zero, x, okay, x plus alpha, if uh, minus alpha is less than or equal than x, less than or equal than zero, and then minus x plus alpha, if uh, zero less than or equal than x, less than or equal than alpha, and then zero, else. Okay, so this is u0 bar, which unfortunately is not C2, hmm? because it is just only Lipschitz. You see, it is Lipschitz bec because we have, uh, in the graph, there are three angles. Anyway, uh, let us suppose that still, huh? so remember, u0 is lip and not C2. But however, uh, still we, we assume that the correct solution is this. And this can be seen. So we, can, we keep still this as the correct solution. And in any case, keep D'Alembert formula. OK. So now let us try to, uh, to depict. Uh, so initially, then I, I will try to do some uh, movie, a sort of movie. So by movie, I mean that uh, for different times, I draw the solution. So I have just pictures at different times. Let, let, so let, let us call this movie. OK, so we have uh, time is alpha over 4c. So we have a traveling wave. So alpha over 4c means that now we have, uh, we divide this into four parts. So let me put it here. OK, so this is. Um, so this is alpha, this is alpha, okay, and then I have So I have, uh, so let us consider the direct wave, direct meaning moving toward the right. This is the direct wave moving with velocity c toward the right. And then let us consider the inverse wave. So these are our two uh, objects separately, separately. Huh? 
And then we have to sum, to superpose. So I need another, I need another uh, object. So let, let me try to do something like, uh, something like this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm doing some something not pre so precise. Another pick, another. So this is our solution in blue at time alpha over 4c. Now, let us continue the picture at alpha time alpha equal t equal alpha over 2c. OK, so. OK, so my, my wave now is, is here. OK. And then I, and then I have the other one. So this is alpha, alpha over two, something like this. Sorry, I'm, I'm not. OK. So that our solution is essentially, say, something like this. So in blue, I have, uh, I have the solution u, OK? So let us continue. Well, then, then let me continue the, the movie. Say this is a time three alpha over four c. So that now our solution is something like something like um, something like this. OK, something like this. So from, from this, you already see an interesting fact. From this picture, you see that these are, uh, so the, the maxima, the point where the solution u is, is maximum, like the, this part here, are not preserved. Because you see now. There are other maximum points. I mean, this, this goes down, but this goes up. Hmm? And then finally, there is an interesting time. There is an interesting time. So we have one four, one half, three fourth alpha over c. Okay. And so we have since we have this one half in front, uh, now you see the, 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 the supports are disjoint. The support of the uh, direct wave is just this interval, and the support of the inverse wave is just this interval. So they are maybe they just intersect at one point. But now we have to take the mean of the two, because there is this one half in front. And therefore, 
we have such a kind of solution. Hmm? And then, now, so, for all these times, the two waves interact together. They interact because, you see, they partially overlap. So there is an interaction between the two. After this time, there is, say, that they, they have passed. So, so take t equal c alpha over c. And so we, now we are in this uh, regime. And so the blue one is the solution. Huh? And then they move one from the right to the right, the other to the left. And then so the, then they This is time three half. So this is sorry, it's not very precise. The picture is not very precise. Something like this. Okay. So from this, it is interesting because you you have a flavor of, of what it's it's happening. It's already rather complicated, rather complicated as you can see, even without the initial velocity. So remember that uh, all this picture has an assumption for us just to understand the interaction of two waves, one moving toward the right, the other moving toward the left, keeping the same form, so the same profile. Uh, and another obvious fact, which is of course written here, is that, as I have already said to you, is that there is no regularizing effect. If u0 is Lipschitz, u0 bar is Lipschitz, then u is no more than Lipschitz. As you can see from the pictures, you see, this is Lipschitz. It's not C1. But it is, it is immediate from the expression. So there is no regularizing effect. Okay? So this is the movie. Uh, I hope it is more or less, and so sorry for the pictures, it is, it is more or less clear. Uh, everything follows from the explicit uh, expression. Uh, and so we can try to understand the similar properties looking at another picture, which is the picture in now in uh, time space. So as I, as I told you, there are six, oh, okay. So let us assume uh, so assume exercise two, assume now, assume now u zero bar is any, any initial condition with the proper regularity but the support of u0 bar is contained, say, in uh, alpha 1, alpha 2. So if you want, you can think about the previous u0 bar. In the previous case, u0 bar was this. And the support was contained in minus alpha, alpha. Okay. More generally, now, assume that u0 bar is an initial condition with the support contained in some interval alpha 1, alpha 2, OK? Hmm? OK, so for instance, the previous u0 bar is OK. Hmm? So now we have alpha 1 and alpha 2. And so we can write the inverse and direct characteristics in time space. 
And so we have six regions. Uh, the number was, no, this is number six. This is number one. This is number two. This is number three. This is number five. This is number uh, four. Okay. Okay. So, my first remark is that uh, the after some time, which can be computed maybe is alpha over C, at least in the previous example. In this region here, time space region, u is equal to 0. And this is, you see, starting from this time, u is 0 here. Huh? And then afterwards, for subsequent times, so after this time, u is 0 in a, in a region which is increasing in time. So you see, this region increases. As time uh, go on, uh, the, the space increases here, because this is x and this is time. And in this time-space region, the solution is vanishing. And it's exactly this phenomenon. So starting from this time, then there is a larger interval where the solution is 0. You see? OK? Moreover, we know that the solution must be 0 also here. So 0, 0, 0. And this can be understand, understood from the previous picture. You see the solution were 0 here and here. here and here. So in this part of the, of the time space, uh, 0. Interaction of the two waves, direct and inverse, happens in this region 1. Here there is a direct wave. Here there is an inverse wave. And they interact in this small triangle, region 1, uh, which is here. And then here there is only the direct wave in this part. And here there is only the inverse wave. Sorry for the pictures. This is, is an attempt to make to make clear the situation, which is not easy because even if this is a one space dimension PD, still there is time. So time and space are at least two 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 coordinates. So it's, 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 it's not it's not so immediate even to to draw a picture. Okay. So now. Uh, so so you see. How, 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 important, how important is this formula? Because everything is deduced from the explicit expression. Now, let me try to suppose now that uh, exercise, exercise 3. Assume now that the initial position of the y of the um, assume now that u zero bar is equal to zero, hmm? but u one bar is non zero, hmm? so that u of t x is just only one over two c integral x minus c t x plus c t u1 bar sds. OK. So now, maybe this we can write this, uh, say, as uh, alpha. So that our notation maybe is alpha 
1 over 2 sigma d alpha of x minus ct minus minus alpha of x minus ct where alpha say is a primitive uh, is a primitive of u of 1 over 2 c u1 bar say for instance alpha say of tau alpha bar is equal 1 over 2 c integral say from 0 to r of u1 bar of s ds okay Now, therefore, we are almost in the previous case, almost, huh? which is the difference between uh, initial position equal to 0 and initial velocity equal to 0. So you see, still we have a superposition of, uh, of, of the same profile, like this. But now there is the first difference. There is this minus here. Alpha bar. Yeah. One over two. One over. Two. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, because thank you. You see, in this. So yeah, yeah. Because I put. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So now, uh, as I, as I, what I'm saying is that now there is a first difference here. There is a minus. Therefore, it's not exactly like the previous case, because one of the two changed signs. Huh? It's not exactly as before, huh? because here there is a plus, and here there is. A, oh, it is true that here we have the same function alpha alpha. And here u zero bar and u zero bar, okay. But there is a difference here. There is a plus and a minus. Huh? So it is still you. You can imagine again a picture as before, but now you have to change. If you have it, um, if your uh, inverse wave is alpha going through the left to the left, then the direct wave is minus alpha going to the right. Huh? So, so there is this difference here. Not only this, but also, maybe I can give you this. So think, <coughs> think about the previous case. Um, so what about here? So now the, the question may be homework. Is it true that now that so take take uh, take uh, no? Is it true that uh, uh, that uh, uh, u is equal to zero in region six? Hmm? Is it true? Is it true? Take for instance, take for instance. For example, say uh, u1 bar equal to this. Okay. Assume, for instance, that u1 bar plays the role of the u0 bar in the previous case. Hmm? This was u0 bar in the previous case. Now, now we are in this exercise, we are assuming u0 bar equal to 0. 
Therefore, take u1 bar like this, for instance. Hmm? Well, what happens? Maybe I can. Uh, um, this is not true. It's not true. Why is not true? Well, the idea is the following: you are taking a primitive of this. Huh? For instance, a primitive of this is a function, say, which is maybe zero here. Then the derivative is positive, so it is something like this, say. Huh? It is the primitive. Hmm? Maybe zero here. Then this is the derivative of this. Okay? So the positive derivative this is huh? positive derivative uh, means that u is increase this is increasing and then uh, it reaches some constants. Hmm? So you see, if this is your profile moving so this is now this is your profile. Um, this is your your profile moving say toward the left. And assume that this is zero. Well, the point is now that here is not zero anymore. Huh? And even if then, if you if you change sign, well, try to do to convince by yourself that now. In general, we cannot expect in this region that the solution is zero. Hmm? Okay, think about this example just for. Okay. Hmm. Now, uh, some modifications of. Uh, of this problem. So, okay, we, we have studied an ideal problem because our space was the wall line, but uh, more realistic. more realistic problem is the half line. Half line means that we are interested in, in say, uh, r, maybe, times 0 plus infinity. Now we want to work. So our, our space domain is just a half line now, instead of all the whole line. So, however, here there is a problem because this, this object has a boundary. Huh? And so it is not enough anymore to assign an initial position and an initial velocity, but you have to specify also a boundary, a so-called boundary condition. Hmm? So, so this makes the problem more realistic, but we, we have to impose uh, a boundary condition. And so, and then, so we, we can do this. So let, let us consider the following problem. Say in R times zero plus infinity, then U of zero equal U of zero dot equal u0 bar dot u in c2 okay as, as usual ut0 dot u1 dot and then u at t0 this is the so this is the initial velo uh, this is the initial position because this is time this is the initial velocity given as before given functions you okay this is say in c2 this is say in c1 and then we now time is is going huh? but space is fixed hmm? 
Therefore, we, we now fix this, say, to be, for instance, equal to 0. So our, uh, our, our object, our, our one-dimensional uh, wire is fixed at, at, at the point, exactly, for any times. Hmm? So we could, in principle, assign assign this, but uh, for simplicity, take h1 equal to 0. OK? OK. Mm. Now, this formula is not true anymore. And moreover, moreover, for simplicity, uh, so for simplicity, we could also work for positive times, maybe. Hmm? Positive times, just for. OK, this is for any positive time. We are looking for a smooth enough solution. This means that if we want a smooth, do you see that the, there is something missing here? If we look for a smooth enough solution, there is something that we have to add. Can you see? Huh? So we have space, time, here our u must be fixed Dirichlet condition equal to 0, and uh, there is something which, which we need to, 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 to ensure u to be smooth of class C2. Can you see it? Huh? I mean, we want u to be equal to 0 huh? for all times. Huh? At, at the origin. OK, so here u must be equal to 0. h1, u must be equal to h1, which is equal to 0, OK? So in, in particular, so in the simplest case, u is equal to 0. So our chord, say, is fixed at the, at the origin. Not only this, this is this condition, OK? Next, we want that at time 0, on this, on this uh, li half line, u is equal to u0 bar. And the vertical component of the gradient huh, must be equal to u1 bar. So necessarily, there should be some something that we want to require, we have to require here. This is just, this, these are just the, the, the boundary and the initial conditions. Huh? I, I hope it is clear. I mean, these are the two boundary conditions, so-called boundary conditions meaning that at time 0 in space, u initially is u0 bar, and its velocity, which is the gradient in the vertical direction, is equal to u1 bar. Since now our space domain is the half line, it has a boundary here. And here also we assign a condition. In particular, we have decided to assign u equal to 0. Huh? H1 T is. So there should be some, some compatibility, at least, in order to have a solution U, which is C2. In this domain, uh, then there should be reasonably some compatibility between U0 bar, U1 bar, and H1. 
here ut is equal ut0 is equal h1 of t. So what, what, I mean, u0 bar, which is a function of x only. So you see, u0 bar is a function of x only. So now it is reasonable, at least, to impose that u0 bar, which is a function of x only, of class C2 up to this point. So it is in particular defined on this point, it is reasonable to assume that u0 bar at this point is equal to h1 and 0. Which for our choice, this, this, for our ch simple choice, h, h1 is 0. Yeah, it is not indeed, but there is another one. And then, what about u1 bar? Yes, exactly. So h1 is also, h1 is 0, eh, by the way, but assume that now is of class C2, OK? 0 plus infinity. Mm. Now, this 0 plus infinity refers to time, uh, because the domain of h1 is time, is not space. OK, it's this one. Mm. OK. h1 prime. This is. Uh, equal to 0. Therefore, in, with our choices, this is equal to 0. Hmm? And maybe this is still not enough. And so we have to, to impose h1 second of 0. So this is ut t is equal to uxx c square u0 bar second this is the second this is the, these are the compatibility conditions let me check just uh, Mm hmm OK. OK, so these are called compatibility conditions. In order to have a C2 solution, U, OK? OK. OK, so maybe I can give you the following non, 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 not easy exercise, not easy exercise. So which is the explicit expression of the solution in this case? The solution, u. So this is home. work has the following expression.
the usual one. This is the usual one. The one bar of S T S if X minus C T if X minus C T is bigger or equal than zero, T is positive, X is positive. <coughs> okay. And if so if in, instead x minus ct is less than or equal than 0, and yet x is positive, t is positive, then there is a difference, which now I tell you. So the, the difference is this, this, and this. We are working in this, uh, in this x is positive, t is positive, and then uh, if this left uh, uh, extremum extremum of, of the integral is positive, then this is the usual D'Alembert formula. But if in this region, uh, this uh, uh, left, uh, this x minus ct is negative, then we have to change it, and, uh, and this is the situation. So how to prove this? Well, um, hint, still the solution, a solution, a solution to the more realistic semi-infinite uh, problem one, still this can be written as Still, a solution u to 1 can be written as f plus g. For some uh, f and g c2. Hmm? Still this. Then, once you know this, Then you can, uh, then you can try to impose the boundary conditions. For instance, then you have some. So you have u. Now you want to find capital F and capital G. Hmm? So let me let me uh, summarize. Assume that you have a, a C two solution of this problem. Hmm? Since this operator splits into two operators, as we know, two first order operators, still our solution, if it exists, uh, must be of this form. For some, f and g of class C2. Hmm? Now, we have to find f and g because at the end, the solution of the exercise is this. Hmm? Well, the only thing that we can do is to impose the, uh, the boundary conditions and the initial conditions. Okay? For instance, um, For instance, um, at time zero, we know this. In particular, I put zero here. So u of zero x must be equal to u zero bar of x. 
and therefore this must be equal to f of x plus g of x. Huh? This is given by this. This is the first relation between f and g. Hmm? Not only this, but we have also ut. Therefore, ut of tx, which is the derivative with respect to t of this, which is cf prime of x plus ct minus c g prime of x minus ct. So this gives us another relation. Because now I have this for any times. My solution is C2 up to the boundary. And therefore, I can put here time equal to 0. And therefore, U1 bar at x eh? U1, so Ut at time 0 x, which is equal also to U1 bar at x, must be also equal to C f prime of x minus C prime of x. So and then we have another relation. So so huh? uh, so if, if if we integrate here for instance in in between zero and uh, x say u one bar of s and ds we get f prime of x minus, and so on. I mean, you, you can integrate here, because this is homework. I mean, you, you, you can integrate here. And so you have uh, f of x minus f of 0 uh, minus g of x minus g of 0. And therefore, Okay. And therefore, then you can couple this. I mean, you can try to put this and this together. And then go on using also that this is equal to 0, etc., etc. Okay? So this is the exercise. is not is not easy um, and then well, there is a final ah, maybe maybe I want to say uh, two things more maybe maybe le let us go to this one to the last one The solution. I mean, <laughs> you start from a solution. Then necessarily, the solution will be this. So it becomes the solution. Yes. 
I mean, if you have any solution of class of this regularity class C2, then that solution is always this. No, no, you can show, thank you for the remark. He says, maybe it's not C2. The question is maybe it's not C2 along the characteristic line. No, because of our compatibility conditions. You can check that this solution is actually C2. Because of our, of our compatibility conditions. The solution is actually C2 everywhere in the quadrant. Hmm? A positive times and x, x positive and t positive. X positive and t positive. I'm working on x positive and t positive in, in this moment. OK. Yes, uh, the, the, the uniqueness issue is always delicate. But uh, if we assume sufficient regularity of the, of the, of the data, and in this one dimensional linear case, the solution is explicit and that is the solution. Hmm? Classical solution, classical solution, the classical solution. Meaning that at any point Tx, UTT at Tx is equal to C squared UXX at Tx. This means to be a solution at any point. Okay, now a remark concerning uniqueness. This is theorem. On bounded domains. Uniqueness on bounded domains. So this, this theorem in principle does not apply to what we have set up to now, because now we are work, we will, we will work on a bounded domain. So omega is, say, a bounded smooth domain in a ren. Hmm? Previous case was n equal to 1, was the previous case, but in the previous case, case, omega was either the line or the half line. This, on the other hand, is any dimension but a bounded smooth domain. What's hmm? the definition of smooth domain? Say, uh, bounded smooth open set. It means that. Uh, its boundary locally can be written as a graph of a C infinity function, the usual stuff, okay? So if you write it in local charts, the charts are C infinity. Hmm? You can look at locally as a graph of a function of n minus one variable. So and consider the solution, let, uh, let us consider the problem UTT minus C squared Laplace of U equal to F. So let me give an also F. smooth enough be given also. So you see now this is the Laplace of u. So in one space dimension, this is uxx. But this, this argument now is, works in any dimension. So then u of 0, let me call it u0 bar, ut of 0 
u1 bar at t equal to 0 so this is omega now and assume also that uh, we want now we need also u equal h1 on so this is in uh, 0 capital T times omega this is at time 0 so initial conditions here next uh, I want to give a boundary condition H1 on say boundary of omega on say 0 t times boundary of omega hmm? so this is the, the in this picture this the boundary of omega consists of two points so these two points is, in this picture is the boundary at the boundary of omega so on this uh, see this is capital T okay we want we have a solution you inside this uh, cylinder, half cylinder, a portion of cylinder, say, and then assume that we have a compatibility conditions between H1 and U0 and U1 plus compatibility conditions. Between uh, H0, between U0, U1, and H1. And so I assume, so then two has at most, at most one, uh, has at most one solution, one classical solution. By classical, I mean C2. So this is uniqueness, it's not existence. It does not say that the solution exists. It says, if it exists, it's unique. So there is nothing about existence, but there is a statement on uniqueness. Yeah, the case n equal 1 is the, would be the case on an interval, say 0L, for instance, would be. Yes? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in in, uh, in uh, any, in, uh, so the, uh, the question is about the smoothness of the boundary of an interval. Okay. Uh, any interval say 0 L the boundary of this interval is of course the point 0 and the point L and this is perfectly smooth it is perfectly smooth in one dimension it is trivial that is smooth if your omega is just an interval hmm? if for instance is a countable number of intervals it is less trivial but this is just huh? now assume in one dimension take omega as a one interval so this is automatically satisfied it is automatically smooth hmm? um, now you will see why I need smoothness and boundedness because 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 the proof runs so, so let, let us prove this result Okay, so assume that you have two solutions, U1 and U2. Assume that U1 and U2 are two solutions, two classical solutions. Hmm? 
Hmm? Then take the difference, and let, let me call it uh, maybe uh, W, W, 1, U1 minus U2. Of course, I want to show that W is identically 0. The thesis, so define W. Thesis, W is identically 0. Because once W is identically 0, it means that U1 is equal to U2. It means that all solutions are the same. Hmm? So now I introduce the following for any T. Say in 0 capital T, I introduce the following quantity. That let me call ET. ut square t t dot square plus u square x. So let me introduce this sort of energy. What is this? Uh, it is, okay, ut evaluated at that t. So t is fixed. I take on, the, on, I mean, I am fixing T. I have this time slice, and I integrate on this time slice. Hmm? What are, sorry, what are? In this, uh, the uh, two. two. Ah, is they are always the same, the same condition as before. Say C2 of omega bar, C1 omega bar. I think they, they are enough. I think that they are enough also. C2. Hmm? But how, how regular must be uh, the initial conditions that we, we, uh, we understand from the proof? Hmm? So uh, what I was saying is, the, is this. Uh, so fix any positive time. And then consider this integral quantity, ut squared plus grad u squared. OK? So everything is well defined because we are assuming that the solution is C2 up to the boundary. Therefore, these are finite. Ut is C1. Grad U is C1 up to the boundary. So the integral are finite. Hmm? Continuous function up to the boundary. Uh, so the, these integrals are finite for the moment. Hmm? OK, so let us consider this sort of energy. And let us try to see which kind, if, what happens. Now, th this is differentiable in time. And so, and, and, and so we, can, we can try to, now we can try to differentiate E in time. Is this symbol clear? This is the gradient of u in space. Hmm? So e dot t. Maybe I can put one half here just for uh, elegance. <laughs> one half, just for elegance. So now I can differentiate this with respect to time. I can, mm, everything is smooth enough so that the derivative, I can put derivative inside the integral. And so this is equal to ut utt plus scalar product. So let me use the symbol for the scalar product. Scalar product um, grad u grad ut dx. 
Mm? Remark, before continuing, let me do this remark. W solves, W is in C2, etc., etc., and solves the homogeneous problem WTT minus. Uh, so let, let me also, for this argument, let me normalize things so that C is equal to 1, just. Uh, just for simplicity, okay? I, I normalize with C equal to 1. So there is no C here, no C in the equation. Uh, this is equal to 0. W0 is equal to 0. Wt of 0 is equal to 0. And also at time 0. And also w is equal to 0 on 0 t times boundary over. Well, because the problem is linear. So w is the difference of two solutions. Uh, the problem is linear. So I take the difference of the, two of the two equations, f minus f here gives 0. u0 bar minus u0 bar gives 0. u1 bar minus u1 bar gives 0 h1 minus h1 gives 0. So w is a solution of our PD with zero boundary and initial conditions. Hmm? The point is to prove that w is 0. Necessarily 0, not, not any other function. OK, so, so let, let me summarize. I take any two solutions, u1, u2. The difference, I call it W. I observe that W solves an homogeneous problem, OK, by difference. And I want to show that W is identically 0. Hmm? OK. I introduce this integral quantity for any time, this object. And I first. Eh, uh, maybe WT, uh, no, okay, this is UT, yes. This, this, this integral uh, quantity, WT, see, W. I want to show that W is identically zero. First of all, I will try to show that E is equal to zero. So if I show that E is equal to zero, then WT is equal to zero and gra grad of and grad of, uh, of, uh, of v will be equal to 0. OK? C can you follow? Is it clear? So let, let me say once more. Uh, I introduce this integral quantity. My aim is to prove that w is equal to 0, so that uh, these are equal. To prove that this is equal to 0, I, I will try to prove, first of all, that e is equal to 0. This, hmm? so, so this is uh, this, sorry, this is W everywhere, of course. So if I prove that E is equal to zero, this does not imply that W is equal to zero, but at least it implies that W is constant. Then I will use the boundary conditions, which says that w is 0 at the boundary. So necessarily, w will be 0. This is the, the strategy of the proof, OK? Is it clear? OK. So now, uh, e dot of t is this. OK. And now, um, I can uh, make an integration by parts. So this remains as it is. I cannot integrate by parts here because the integral is just only in space. So I cannot integrate by parts this. Hmm? But this is the gradient in space. 
I have, of course, used the following, eh, by the way. I have, of course, used by smoothness. Eh? I have, of course, used this. Eh? That I can interchange um, time and space derivatives like this. Okay? This I have already used. I have this theorem because W is C2 by assumption. So now I am here, and now I can integrate by parts. Huh? I hope you that you remember now the integration by parts formula. Let me, I think that I have already written down. Of course, I don't remember the symbols. Um, under smoothness assumption, the integration by parts formula was something like scalar product. Do you remember the, 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 the symbols that I have used? Maybe, maybe we can try to use the same symbols. OK, so let, let, let us go back to the I don't, I don't remember. The versions of eta, yes. omega bound and smooth, and so on. And then this was also the exterior, exterior unit normal. New, the same symbol, new? OK, fine. This is an integration by part. This component is the integral of the bound. Ah, yes, sorry, <laughs> the integral of the bound. Yes. And this is the Hausdorff measure. OK. So now, now from this, we can, we can deduce an integration by far formula slightly more general, but actually equivalent. So eta was a vector field. Now replace to eta the product u times eta, where u is scalar, smooth enough function. So u scalar smooth enough function, eta smooth enough vector field. So this product is again a vector field, hmm? scalar time vector. So I replace, in place of eta here, I put u times h <coughs> eta here. So let me rewrite it, u eta. So our formula says this, u scalar product. Hmm? Just the previous formula with u eta in place of eta. And then, however, I can, uh, I can, I can um, write with this. This is actually grad u times eta plus u divergence of eta. Hmm? Therefore, uh, our formula substituting this uh, vector calculus inside here gives the following u divergence of eta in the x is equal to minus grad u scalar eta in the x plus u eta dot nu in the x minus 1. OK. I have simply substituted this in here. Therefore, I have u divergence of eta here, and then this integral term is now on the right hand side. Is it okay? So maybe we can keep this as uh, our integration by part formula. Hmm? Is it okay? Okay, I mean, you know this formula, in my opinion, very well. 
for instance, in the one-dimensional case, uh, in the one-dimensional case, n equal to 1, uh, this is u eta prime is equal minus u prime eta uh, plus, as you call, u eta, uh, I don't know, This is simply the, the usual stuff. This simply, how do you call this? Integration by parts? Change, no, no, integration by parts. You see, because now if your object, your domain omega is just an interval, huh? the, the unit normal are just uh, out to our unit normal as this. So you, you, you surely know at least this formula, but this is just the generalization of that. OK? OK, now, uh, it is also useful to keep this formula when eta is not any vector field, but the gradient of something. Hmm? So when eta is the gradient of something, this is u Laplace of eta equal minus grad u grad v dx plus u dv over. OK? Mm? I have simply substituted uh, this, this vector field in place of eta here. This is the, the divergence of the gradient is the Laplacian. This is the scalar product between two gradients. And this is the uh, normal derivative of V. Huh? This is simply, now it's very late, <laughs> sorry. So I can. Huh? This is the this is the, um, no, the um, directional derivatives of v in the direction u omega. Hmm? So now, sorry, it's very it's too late now. Uh, we will start tomorrow. We will start from exactly where we are now. So remember, um, I, I have written this formula because now I want to apply it. This integration by part formula will be applied into. You see, what happens here? I, want, I have a gradient here. You see? Gradient against the gradient. And here we have gradient against the gradient. So it means that this object can be written as this plus this. And therefore, one gradient, one gradient, um, sorry, this is Laplace of, of V, sorry. So one gradient here on U disappears and it goes twice on V. Huh? And then there is a boundary term. So the point here, I want to work on this integral expression E of T. And this, and now I want to put this gradient here, here. <coughs> Change in sign. Huh? So, you see, we can apply this formula. Huh? And then there is a boundary term. Boundary of omega. This one. So I have D plus of V, a plus of V dv over dn wt vha minus 1. So this is e dot of t. Now, hmm? is it OK up to now? Now you see, what is this? Well, is this? 
it is zero. Why is it zero? Um, because uh, W satisfies the homogeneous equation inside our cylinder. Our so W satisfies our uh, PD inside this portion of cylinder. In particular, on this time slice, T here, it, everything is C2. So on this time slice, this, the PD is identically satisfied. And therefore, this is identically 0. So this is 0. This is also 0. And then you have to try to see why this is 0 using the fact that the W is zero on the, on the boundary, also on the, hmm? So since W is zero, also WT will be zero. So E dot is zero. This means that T is constant. Next, we have to conclude that uh, not only uh, the W is constant, because now W is constant, because this is, so ET, no, we will continue, we will, we will continue tomorrow.